Hello! In this lesson, you will learn how to use PHP to parse XML feeds and XML API data from any of your favorite websites or from websites that your clients request dynamic data feeds from. We will be tapping into the simple XML extension of PHP for just one of its functions. You can parse RSS and API data from all of the popular websites online that happen to syndicate their information. So this is what we're going to be doing within this video lesson. I'm going to go to YouTube, then I'm going to go to Develop PHP, and then I'm going to go to TED, and I'm going to access their data feeds. I'm going to snoop out where they have links to their RSS data feeds. I'm going to find them. I'm going to get the URL to those data feeds, and then I'm going to create an XML object out of those URLs, and then I can parse it just like it's a regular XML object, okay? So that's what we're going to show you how to do. It's no problem. It's very easy. It's like two lines of code, maybe three. Don't worry. The first thing you want to do is create a new blank PHP file. You can really name it whatever you want, but if you want to name it like I have mine named, it's feed parse example dot PHP. So within it, let's create a new PHP scripting block. So we'll open up the PHP tag and then we'll close it. Now in the first line, let's create a variable. We're going to call that variable HTML because that's going to be our HTML output variable. At the end of the script, we're just going to echo that HTML variable. So actually, let's go ahead and do that now. Let's put echo HTML variable. There we go. That's going to be really the last line in our little example here. And right now, HTML is empty, so this would echo emptiness to the page. What we're going to do inside of a loop is build up on this HTML variable. Now let's create a variable called URL because that is the variable that's going to store or hold the value of the URL that is the data feed or the syndicated feed that whatever popular website happens to have running. Now I said we were going to target YouTube first so let's go to YouTube and what we're going to do is try and find their data feeds so I'm going to go to the bottom and click Developers. Now that link should lead me to their data APIs, which are right here. And let's see, I'm going to click the PHP link at the bottom. And here's their developer guide for PHP. And really, I don't have to tap into their API. I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't really have to. You can just tap into the feed in a raw sort of way if you have the URL. So what I'm going to do is go down until I find where it says show, let's see, searching for videos, videos uploaded by a specific user. That's what I want. I'm going to target my specific channel. You can target your channel or any channel that you like. And you can look at all of this information they have here. All these different URLs point to different sort of data feeds and you can set them to be any kind of feed that you like in many instances. Right here it says feed identifier. You just supply it with the identifier here that you want and that's the kind of information that you get access to. But what I want is uploaded by a specific user. So I'm going to grab this right there. That's the URL that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to change this from username because that's just a generic placeholder to flash building. I'm going to put my channel name right there. So now we have our URL to the data feed that we want from YouTube in place and ready to go. Okay, now we're going to create our XML object. So let's put XML as the variable name for that XML object. And the simple XML function that we're going to tap into is called simple XML underscore load underscore file. And then you open close parentheses, put in your semicolon. And then you just add the URL variable as the parameter to that. So once you load this URL into this simple XML load file function, you get an XML object from it. And now we can work with that within a loop. So let's go down one line and let's type in for. And this is going to be a for loop. So you can open close parentheses, open your curly brace, go down a couple of lines and close off your curly brace. Now within the parentheses for a for loop, you have to supply three parameters and I'm using a for loop because I want to have a ceiling on the amount of data that I'm going to get back. Maybe I only want 10 items. Maybe I only want five items to display from that data feed. Maybe it has a hundred items in it and I don't want that many. So that's why I'm putting the loop plus the loop 
helps us keep everything lean so I don't have to have a whole lot of code to render out many, many different items. Many, many different items will come rendered out through my for loop. Okay, so for loop, I said, gets three parameters. So the first one is the variable. We're going to name the variable i, and it's going to be equal to zero to start off with. And then you put semicolon. And the next parameter is the condition logic. So we say i is less than 10. So this is what it means. First, you created a variable called i, and you gave it a starting value of zero. Then your condition is, as long as i is less than 10, this loop is going to run and process code that's within it. And the way i changes from zero all the way up to 10 is this i++, plus plus, which increments a number. So you'll go all the way from zero to nine, actually, which will give you 10 items. And within this for loop is where we're going to access all of the API data and or the feed data and we're going to pack it into this HTML variable. Now before we can put some code in there we have to know the structure of this data feed. So what we're going to have to do is go to that data feed within our browser. So within your browser you can just put into the address bar that URL and it'll show you a feed. We can see the feed right here. And it depends what browser you're in, whether you'll see the actual feed data or not. So you see the feed data? Now, what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom because I find that's the quickest way to get to what I want to see. You can see the closing tag is feed. And then each video, since this is my channel at YouTube that we're targeting for data feed, each video is represented by entry. So I can target feed and then entry and then that'll give me an array of all of the entries or somewhat like an array even though it's it's XML data structure this is really the first things I need to see to be able to tap into what's going on here and then I can check out the rest of the nodes like there's link see that link node I can target that node and there's probably a title node for the title of the videos so let's see if that works let's go back into the code Let's place in a new variable for title. And that's going to be equal to our XML object. And then we go into the XML object, into feed. And then we go into entry from feed. So we're just accessing the nodes of the XML there. And then we're going to place in brackets. And within the brackets, we're going to put our I variable. And that I is going to be changing each time through the loop. The first pass through the loop, this I is a zero. The second pass through the loop, the I becomes a 1, all the way until it reaches 9, because that's the ceiling we have. So we're going to get 0 through 9, which is 10 items that we want out. Then after we access entry, we go into the title node. So we can just type in title, and that should give us 10 YouTube video titles from my YouTube channel, my latest 10 videos, just the titles of them. Now we have to make sure we put that into the HTML variable. So let's snatch up that HTML variable, put it right there, and then we'll put dot equals. And we put dot equals to make sure we're appending to that variable and not overriding it with data each time. So we're going to output within the HTML that title. Actually, we can output some actual HTML there. So we'll put the title within double quotes, and then you can wrap that in h3 or h2 whatever you want or I'll just wrap it in paragraph tags that way each one is separated down the page now let's see if we get any success with that and if we do we can build upon it and get more information out of that data feed okay here's my example page and as you can see I don't get squat so I gotta change something let's see if we do it without accessing the feed node and we just go straight into the entries let's try that okay now I'll refresh and there we go so you can see I have 10 of the latest 10 videos that I released, here's their titles. So that means I've successfully tapped into the YouTube data API or the data XML feed for my channel. Now I can go about accessing the description of the videos, the ID, and all the other information that I want to grab out of it. Okay, so here's the raw source view of that feed from YouTube again. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to highlight a bunch of this. I'm going to take it into my uh, text editor. I'm just going to see what's going on with it. I'm going to take about right there. I'm going to go into my text editor. I'm just going to create a new, it could be any kind of file. I'm not even going to save it. I'm just going to paste all of that right there. 
and I want to see what these nodes are set up like. So you can see there's the feed node closing, the entry node closing right there. And we have a lot of other different nodes. So what you want to do is go in and separate these all out so you can see the individual nodes. Okay, so just so things are really clear, I broke it down to the individual little nodes that I want to access, and I removed all the content from them because that's not really important. What is important is the name of the node. So what I want to do is get the ID, title, content, and author name. So what I have so far is the title. So let's get the ID now. All we have to do is go in, pop in ID here and ID right here. Then we'll get the description or the content. In this case YouTube calls the description content. So the description for the video is content. Let's just call it content. And the last thing we want is the author and name. So what we'll have to do is go one more node in on that one to get to the author name. So let's grab this and actually let's put that one up top. So let's put author then go one more node into the name element. We'll call this name. Or actually let's just call it author. That makes more sense. Alright, that's all the data I want for my little loop. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is change these paragraphs to div elements because they're going to have more lines in them now. And the title, I'm just going to wrap with uh, maybe an h3 element. And then I want to also add the content under the h3 element. So I can put that right there. And then the ID I'm going to put right under the content. So I'll just put a break tag right there. And there, ID will be under the content, which is the description for the, each respective video. And then the author, we can put that in there as well. We'll put that right in front of ID. And then we'll just put a hyphen or something like that. Now we'll see how that renders out. Actually here, let me put a HR element between each pass of the loop there'll be an HR element that renders. Okay, we'll refresh our test page here. And there we go. There's the first video or the latest video that I put up. And here is the description for the video. There's the title in the first line. You can see so each first line in the H3 element holds the title. And you can see the description comes after the title. And then we have the author name right there and the ID. Now if you just wanted the video ID this link might not be good for you because this is actually to a data feed this whole link. But if, what if you just wanted the ID? You can easily do that in PHP. Where is that? ID you would just put the uh, string replace function to work on it. So let's put ID is equal to string underscore replace open close parenthesis put a semicolon now let's go back in the browser and let's take a look let's get that link and this is the characters that we want to delete out of that now watch what I'm gonna do here my first parameter of the string replace function is what I want replaced which is this string the second parameter is what I want to replace that string with in this case nothing that's why I just want to delete that part of the string and then I can just put the ID variable there because that's the data that I want to affect. So the string replace function takes three parameters. What you want to replace in a string, what you want to replace it with, and then the string that you're doing the replacing upon. Now let's see what that gives us. And we should see just a video ID. That way you could actually render the video to the page if that's what you wanted to do. If you wanted to actually render the video using YouTube's embed code, you can get the ID in this way very easily. So let's refresh this and we'll see if this whole link changes, this whole ID link changes to just the video ID here. Let's refresh and there we go. We got access to just the video ID. Now check this out. We can go to YouTube and grab any embed code for any video. So where is that? Share I think. If we go to embed, see that embed code right there? I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go here into my HTML. And before my HR tag, I'm going to pop in that code. And you'll see we have to escape 
any double quotes. So I'm going to change those to single quotes so I don't have to put any backslashes in my code. Just change all these double quotes to single quotes. And there we go. And now the video will actually render there on the page. Oh, actually, you got to change this to the video ID, which was right here, ID. You take that and you put it right there. That way it's dynamic for all of them on the page. All right, so we'll refresh the page and see what we get. So you can see underneath each title, description, we have the video actually rendering. And you can see it's all the actual proper video that should be there for the title and the description. It's pretty cool, huh? So that's how you can get a lot of automated data flow on your websites or your clients' websites or whatever without having to do very much. Look at that script, it's tiny. And since we have most of the code structure in place, all we got to do is change just a few things here and there because all structures or most uh, XML RSS data structures for various websites are all set up different. So you're not going to find the same node names and node structure on YouTube as you would on TED or develop PHP or things like that. Some of them conform to the same node naming, but you won't find the same node names and structure on every uh, feed that you come across. So that's why you got to dig into it the way I did and break it down the way I broke down the entries from YouTube and got all of the little nodes that I wanted to get out of it. Now we'll go to developphp.com and see if we can access one of its feeds. So we'll click the little RSS syndication button down here and we can do any feed we want. Let's get the library syndication. And let's look at the code for that, the source code. And you can see mine is a little bit neater and it's all dynamic so all my latest material would be in here. So let's go ahead and we don't really even have to grab any of this code. We can see what's going on clearly. We have the channel we have items. So I think we can just target the item for that. So let's see where we have, let's get rid of name. So we don't have any of that there. And let's just work on title. We're not going to be replacing ID. We don't have that. Let's just get the title first. Let's remove this iframe that rendered that video from YouTube. We don't need that in this one. We just want the title at first. So that's all I'm going to render. So there we go. Let's see, let's get rid of this content as well. So instead of entry, I'm going to put in item because you can see my XML has no entry tag. I have item tags. And within my item are all my various little uh, nodes for each little entry or each item. And you can see I have title as well. So I can target category, title, link, description. The GUID is permalink, pub date and anything that's within that item element. Let's just see if titles render first. I should get 10 titles of the latest library material added there. Oh, I gotta make sure I have the correct URL as well. I'm still on the YouTube URL. So I can go here, copy link address, and then put this right into place right there to replace where the YouTube data feed link was. You can see mine says .php. What that means is mine is a, a dynamically rendered feed. It uses PHP to access my database and that's how my RSS feed is rendered through dynamic MySQL data. But it pumps it all out in XML structure. That way anybody can tap into it using these sort of methods. So let me save that and now we'll give this a test. Okay back at that same page let's refresh. You can see I get nothing. Now let's see what else I can access. I can access the, let's just grab the description and I'll get the pub date too. Let's do pub date and I'll get the description as well. So let's just copy this line. Let's put two more. This one we're going to call pub date. Take that, put it over here. And this one we're going to call description. 
take that and put it over here now we can add those let's add the description right under the h3 and then pub date we can maybe put a break tag in there put pub date as the last line then we'll have an hr right there now let's press refresh and there we go now we get the title we get the description and we get the date alright see that shows you how you can just go around attacking different feeds no matter what their structure is like or not attacking them you can just strip all the data you want right out of them display it any way you like and now to show you how easy and versatile all this is we're gonna go to TED and we're gonna chew up one of their feeds okay so here I am at TED.com and this is a site that I enjoy because they have very stimulating intellectual videos a lot of times sometimes it's crap but some, uh, most of the time it's very intellectually stimulating so and it's all videos it's like lectures It's really cool stuff and they also have a YouTube channel as well but let's go down to the bottom here and you can see the little RSS icon right there so let's get TED talks via RSS feed click that and that's gonna take you to looks like feed burner but that doesn't matter this is the feed right there you can see it all rendering so let's view source right click view page source and you can see this is in fact XML structure material so we can go down to the bottom again and look and see what we have here we have channel that's sort of like the develop PHP structure I have channel and what else do they have they have link title let's see if they use item uh, da, da, da. yep I see item right there so you know they're accessing item as well so what we're going to do in the code, let's just start with title like we've been doing the others and then we'll know we can access everything else. So let's remove these also right there. That way just the title will render. And we have to make sure we have that URL right here. Just grab this URL right up top at FeedBurner. And in the code, we're going to put it right there. So this should allow us to get the 10 latest titles of the videos from TED.com we get the title rendering then we can delve into the rest of the XML structure and get at the other nodes so here we are at our example page once again let's refresh and there we have it so you can see that the structure of the TED file the TED feed is a little more like the develop PHP feed because I didn't have to change any of this they had channel node and they have item nodes and they use title as well so now you know that you can dig into the rest of this feed and you can get to the link, you can get to the pub date, the category, whatever you want. So let's go ahead and access the category, just for example sake. So right here. And let's just type in category. We'll name the variable category. And we're going to render that variable within our HTML. Let's put it right under the, actually we'll put it in front of the H3 tag. And we'll wrap category within an H2 element. So let's see what that gives us. Let's refresh. So you can see they're all higher education videos. Let's see what else we can access about each video or each entry. Let's get that description. So we can copy that, go back into our code. Just put it right there for now. Copy that title line, paste it right there cut that out and paste it right there so we have description now and we can put description underneath this h3 element now let's see what we get refresh our page and now we have a nice description for each video now I'm not gonna waste your time or mine by taking this any further you know by now that we can access any of the uh, any of the nodes that we want within any XML structure from any site, any feed from any site. So now you know how to go to any popular site that you want. If they have APIs, data feeds, RSS syndication, you can tap into those XML structures and rip all the data that you want out of it and custom design the data presentation with HTML and CSS just like you would any other. And we use a nice little for loop here to give it a ceiling so we can get out just as much as we want and not more. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video lesson and I'll talk to you very soon.